A qualified chartered accountant, Saad was named as South African winner of Ernst & Young's 2004 World Entrepreneur Awards. This is Captains of Industry. It's known that you were a multimillionaire by the time you were 29. And I have to ask the question, why you didn't decide to retire to, to some beach at that stage? What has kept you going? What continues to fuel the fire? I actually did retire to a beach for a while. I spent a little time at the Seychelles and the game farms. Um, and then I had quite a few children. So I had four daughters in a row. And I, I decided to start something very small. So we started uh, Aspen PTY. And we were not going to own a factory. And we were going to stay very small in a little building in Durban. And I think having been in the industry before, I looked at South African druggists and I thought, Adcock didn't get them because there was a competition commission issue and and I thought it was something that that we could manage and do and so that started it and now from somebody who would never ever have a factory we've got the largest factories in the southern hemisphere probably and making billions and billions of tablets so um, and people never say never that you couldn't do it correct well that's that's what often drives you is is that is you know if I got if I go back to where this where the management at the time said look you mustn't manufacture part of the plan was to sell the factories that I uh, presented to Investec, who backed us at the time. And uh, when I went to the factories and came back, because we weren't allowed to do due diligence, we were seen as a competitor. I remember uh, coming back and having to tell Stephen Cossett that we we're going to have more debt than he thought. And he was, uh, he was a little sad with me and grumpy, and he didn't stop phoning me for about two years. But there was no way we could get divest those factories. They were the heart and soul, and absolutely decided there and then two things. We were going to make it competitive and it wasn't going to be competitive with Europe, it had to be competitive with Asia. And that at some point, the workers in the business, to make this work, you had to have everybody on board. And there was a division with labor. And so you needed labor on board. The first leg of your success, if we can go back there, and, and the fact that you were auditing a small pharmaceutical company mm. and it caught your eye, you thought you could turn this into something. What triggered that decision to say, this is an arena that I want to explore? You know, it was just from being sitting in the industry. I didn't know beforehand that I'd want to be in pharmaceuticals. I might have been making widgets and, and, and had seen it. It was just that once I started in it, you actually get a sense that you can make a difference. And bear in mind, that it was in a small business, I was into dispensing doctors, going to m many of the townships uh, at a time when uh, it, we're talking now in the 80s. Um, and so you could sit and I mean, I heard some very interesting stories from doctors and I remember telling one doctor, look, here's DPH and you can buy it at 50 cents and here's Rondac and it's five rand and this one you can use in your medical aid patient. He said, hey, Steve, wait a minute. He said, uh, I don't differentiate between patients. The discount you give me on this patient. I said, look, it's the same active ingredients, just the branding. And I, but you know, it, you, you, you had your eyes open for you. you know, I don't differentiate between some that works in a mine and some that works in a farm. So I learned a lot of life lessons and very interesting people that I dealt with, particularly some of the, some of the black African dispensing doctors I dealt with. How did you start? What actually happened? Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people have ideas there. They see an operation, they think, oh, this is something I can make money out of. But you have turned what was essentially an idea into a multi-billion rand business. Well, I think what happened after, bear in mind I was in my 20s, I didn't understand uh, IPOs or listings or anything like that. And when it got to a stage, it was a very big business by the Did time I was in my 20s. Did you need money to start it? Did you need money? It, it, we started with nothing and because we, we had invoice discounting, we were always chasing our tail because we're always in working capital issues. And really what I should have done then was bring in a financial partner and said, okay, let's list it or do it. But uh, when at that time, Premier Pharmaceuticals, we part of Adcock now came to me and said listen we'll pay you more money than you ever have just go away and don't come back I said fine I'm happy to take the money but I'm coming back because I think I know what I want to do but I'll stay out for three years and actually in those three years I went into education um, private education and uh, the varsity college Crawford set up you uh, turned that around yes, you picked it up it was about to be closed down yes. and uh, this was just a little foray on the side yes it was and I, but I, my, my intention was always to come back into pharmaceuticals the, the education was actually actually probably did better financially than I'd done in all the years in the pharmaceuticals before but you said to me I realized my passion was in, was in pharmaceuticals or for, and, I, and I had a plan so when we came back, we were going to own a few brands and have a small tight team. South African Druggers changed all of that for us. And I think when we bought South African Druggers, it made a, the, the bit we bought made about 100 odd million, 123 million, I think, to be exact. 
And I mean, I was not, I'm, I'm a bit wiser now in terms of giving projections or forecasts, but I remember going out to the analyst saying, no, we'll absolutely double this profitability in one year. I mean, you know, if, I, if the board now would be absolutely <laughs> horrified if I tell you about that. You'd definitely be hauled over the yeah, coals if you started correct. to make forecasts. But I mean, that's what I believed, and that's what actually what we did. But I mean, I won't make projections like that again. But of course, you tell that to analysts, no one believes you. Um, and uh, no one took the shares up. They said, no, you're just trying to repackage South African drug. is more expensive. And so we couldn't get our shares away. And I was under a lot of pressure from the bankers to discount the shares to four rand. And so I said, no, so I'd rather have the debt and I'll sort this place out. Was it always plain sailing or did you have sleepless nights? Absolutely had sleepless nights to start because the other person that bought one of the part of the business, a business called MacMed that went insolvent. And they owed us a whole lot of money, which they didn't, they defaulted on us. It wasn't like we didn't have, we had, no one wanted to take our shares. We had a whole lot of debt and now we had more debt. We had a default. So, but we managed to perform really well operationally. We divested some of the, the non-core bits and uh, you know it we shaped it into it was a we were a very competitive business and were we shaped you hands it into on business. in that operational performance right from the beginning yes i've always you know I, i'm not i'm not someone that cannot be hands so if you want to know who's in brazil right now it's me okay I, i'll be fine if, if i'm not operational it's because i've absolute confidence or there's a plan that everyone's working towards if there's an opportunity or a threat in the business you know i, I will be very close to that portion or that side of the business and for the last two or three years before that I was very close to the factory and the operations. Um, but but I it's a huge ex geographical business now, so it how is. do you manage to be all present? You've absolutely got to pick people that are better than you around you. And you've got to say this person is technically more competent than myself, so them, you know, technically th they need to be in that position. It's absolutely around about the team that you surround yourself with. I think uh, what I've always looked for, because I look and you, you've got to look at talent and say, well, where's this person going to fit? Where they're not going to fit? Where do I see it? The one thing that I've noticed, I've got people that are good at commerce and financial and can manufacture. There's only one common thread that every one of those managers have, the good ones, the best ones. They all have a huge attention to detail. And detail, attention to detail is a critical, critical fact. And why? Because if you understand the detail, you can make right decisions. And people think, oh, well, you know, entrepreneurs got a bit lucky, you know, well, risk exactly. reward. Exactly, people talk about the, the right time, mm. right place. Yes. It's all about luck. You don't you, agree? Absolutely not. I mean, people would say, oh, look, the engineering is the right industry to be in. Be reminded, we bought South African drugs. Close it down. This is an industry that will go to Asia. And I truly believe that's exactly what would have happened to the South African market if you didn't make a concerted effort to fight it and to become competitive. The financial partners looking at, you mentioned Stephen Kossif, mm -hmm. and, and he sat in the Captains oh, yeah. of Industry Chair as well, mm -hmm. uh, the CEO of Investec. Do you retain that partnership with, with Investec? Well, you'll always remember the people that back you when you needed them most. So yes, I have, and he'll always shout and swear at me because I'll use another bank because he hasn't done it right and all the rest. But you'll always have a very, very special bond uh, with, with, uh, with the people that back you at the start because they also have lived the whole story with you. And it, it, the story is never plain sailing. The story right now is not plain sailing. It looks, people are, oh, look, you've done it. You know, companies with over 30 billion rand. But it's never, ever, the, the work's never done. 